And so there I was on my hero's journey, well beyond the three o'clock point now, going past four o'clock, five o'clock. And at six o'clock, we hit what we call a crisis point or an ordeal. This is the hero's journey language for you. And if I think about a movie that really demonstrates the six o'clock point of the hero's journey well, I think about Star Wars. And I think about Luke Skywalker facing off against Darth Vader. And as he's doing that, he's not only recognising that Darth Vader is his father, but also that that is the dark side of himself that he does not want to own. And for me, the six o'clock point looked like this. On one level, it looked like that I had been stuffing around trying to write a book for five years at that stage. I'd spent over $30,000 in various writing programs and retreats and what have you. I still didn't have a book and I'd just been made redundant. And what that meant was that I wasn't able to play the pattern out that I used to play whenever I got uncomfortable. And that pattern was to just buy another course, to just go on another retreat, to just need one more thing be before I could finish the book. But you know, in fact, that was what was on the surface. What was more important was what was going on underneath the surface. And for me, what that was, what my Darth Vader moment was, was that I had a 40 year history of binge eating disorder. And I was writing a book about how women can prepare themselves to be well during the midlife phase. And I was writing and putting myself through a program of um, deliberately managing your stress, managing your mindset, uh, exercising, making sure you sleep well and making sure that you eat well. But of course that was the elephant in the room for me. And I had slightly misunderstood what the hero's journey meant to me because I thought that the hero I was meant to be through writing that book was to be saying that with all of the self-care that I practiced on myself before sharing it with you in this book, I thought that that would get me to a point where I wouldn't need to binge anymore, where I wouldn't be so uncomfortable in my own skin anymore. And do you know why that was a crisis point was that the, the little voice in my head had also been saying to me, who would want a coach like you? Who would want someone so broken, so disgusting and so hopeless that they can't even control what they put in their mouth? Now, the thing about the six o'clock point is that it will be incredibly painful but it can be incredibly cathartic as well. And the thing that happened for me at six o'clock when I had nowhere to run and nowhere to hide, no money to buy another course, then the little voice in my head actually changed the tune. And it didn't say, you're too broken, you're too disgusting, you need to solve this problem first so that you can write about it in the past tense. It didn't say that. It said, what if that's not what it's all about? And you know what? With that monkey off my back and the idea that maybe I was worthy of stepping up and sharing what I had to share with the world, with that, I was able to finish the book and I was able to see what it was all about. And what, what it was, was that when I was launching that book and I was standing up on a stage like this, not quite so grand, but a stage like this, and I was able to look at my 14 year old daughter and her 14 year old friends and say to those girls that what I want you to know is that there is nothing so broken, so unspeakable or so unlovable about you that you can't talk to someone about it and know that they will still love you and remind you to love yourself. And you know, it wasn't just those girls who needed to hear that message. It was the little girl inside of here. And at that very moment, I got another piece of absolute clarity. And what that was all about was that I wasn't put on this earth to help women through menopause. I was put on this earth 
to help people to get that feeling, that feeling of wholeness, that feeling of self-worth. And with that, I came out the other end, a very, very different person. And this is what the hero's journey is all about, is that if we take our challenges on board and if we do the work and if we're prepared to step up, then doors will open up for us. And the person coming beyond the six o'clock point, past seven o'clock and eight o'clock, and back into the ordinary world over the threshold at nine o'clock was not the same person. This person you're hearing from now used to call in sick if they were ever going to be called on to talk at a staff meeting. The person you see now is not stymied by negative beliefs about behavioural, you know, dysfunctional behaviour around their eating patterns or whatever it may be. I don't need to be perfect to be able to help people. And that's the message that I want to give you now as potential authors. I want you to know that you are not doing yourself any favours, but most to the point, you're not doing the people you can help any favours at all if you hold back because your book is not good enough or because you are not good enough. There are editors out there who will fix your book and there are people like me who will put you on a platform like this to be able to spread your message. And the whole point of telling you about the hero's journey is to give you two key messages. And one of those is that you need to be able to tell stories. And whether it is the story of the person who is reading the book or not, whether it is the story of the clients who you have helped, or whether it is the story about what got you to where you are now, the ability to tell a story is incredibly important. And most to the point, any of those barriers that you'll be hitting as you go through the journey of writing your book are not there to stop you. They are not there to prove to you that you are not good enough. They are there to prove to you that you will become the person you need to be by pushing through them.